privilege to come to share with you the Word of God. We have been sharing for probably the last three weeks uh, a particular topic or theme, prepared for battle, but not ready for war. Again, that's prepared for battle, but not ready for war. Uh, in the context of this, there are many kind of, I want to call them sub uh, things in the midst of this. And so uh, we were coming in the beginning, we started out talking to you um, from the book of Exodus in the sense of understanding that God was taking the Israelites away from Pharaoh. Uh, in, in that place, God had sent Moses to go and share with Pharaoh to let my people go. And so uh, we begin to understand that God took the people and he, he led them the long way around. And so uh, he brings forth that we might understand his purpose, his reason for doing it. Uh, there were things that God had. And so we've been talking about that, but then moving again in the midst of that, there are some things that I want to share with you that you could understand. I began to share with you all last week uh, in the sense of talking about the presence of God. And if I might say this, saints of God, we need to be equipped uh, with the full armor of God. We, we talk about that. We're using that analogy to be equipped with the full armor of God. Um, to be equipped in this sense is to be in the place that we might understand that we need everything that God has uh, that he wants to use within us. But more importantly today, let's talk some more about the presence of God. Moses in Exodus chapter 33 and around about the 15th verse, uh, Moses is in that predicament or in that place where um, he has been on the mountain. He's come down. Uh, we understood the tablets. He broke the tab, you know, threw the tablets down because of the state of the people as he came down. And then there, he comes to this place, and let's start at verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Mm -hmm. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And thou hast also found grace in thy sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now thy way, that I might know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. Here's Moses talking to the Lord, really speaking some things out that he wants. It's like, God, I want you to understand these are your people. And if these being your people, there are certain things he's looking for. And then he says... And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto them, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up here. Basically, Moses would come to this place. God is telling Moses, Moses, listen, I'm going to send, I'm going to send my angel. You're going to know that I'm with you, but I personally am not going to go. And Moses said, You know, I. Uh, I understand, if I might put it like this, I understand the sense of what you would give, what you're giving me, but if you are not going to be present with us, I don't want it. Now remember, God has already made the promise to the people, and the promise is he's taking them to this promised land, this place they're going to flourish, blossom, and bloom. This place where, whereby when they enter into it, it is this, this place that's promised with milk and honey. It's this place whereby... How I say it? Everything is there that they need not be concerned about because God has already provided. So the promise is still intact, but, but God is saying you're still going to obtain the promise. You just won't have my presence. And Moses says, Moses says, God, if, if we're not going to have your pro presence, I don't even want the promise. Basically, it, it's like the presence of God is more important than anything else. Now, now collectively, we've been talking about, we, we kind of use David as well as Moses. David in Psalms 51, David comes to that place where he says, Create in me, O Lord, a clean heart, renew the right spirit within me. And then David says, D Don't take your presence from me. He had saw King Saul and how Saul had begun to operate under another spirit. 
when the Spirit of God had left him. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, I don't want that to happen to me. So we begin in this day, in this, this particular time, I want to talk to you about desiring the presence of God. Saints of God, we need to have the presence of God more than anything. You know, we've been seeking after so many things, the pleasures more so than the presence. We've been seeking after wealth as opposed to the presence of God. Can I tell you, we've been seeking after so many things, but in it, we're missing what God truly wants, to, wants us to have. When there is no substitute for the presence of God. So look at this, if you will, it is these individuals basically were saying, we desire the presence of God and we refuse to settle for anything less. Now let, let's look at this because I, I, I began, I think last week I began to share with you even to this end that you might understand that the presence of God is the Shekinah. It is, it is really his Shekinah glory. The Hebrew word, for the presence means the dwelling or the settling and denotes the dwelling or settling of the divine presence of God. So it's, it's this place that God is going to dwell and settle upon us. It is this place, the dwelling of God. It, it's kind of like Moses had created another tent and he called it a tent of meeting. And when he had this tent of meeting, it was a place outside the camp that Moses went to meet God. Can I tell you, in the presence of God, this is our place where we're continually in the presence. Now the dwelling, if I will, is meant to be a place where we abide or abode. It's the place where we're supposed to live. It is a continual thing. It's not something you come in and out. It is our dwelling place. It's the place where the presence of God, can I say it like this? It was the glory of God, his Shekinah, that covered Adam and Eve. It was the Shekinah glory that had covered them before they recognized, it because of sin, they recognized they had no clothing. But prior to that, it was his Shekinah glory. It was the glory of God that shrouded or covered them. Well, this dwelling we're talking about, the presence, is really talking about a deep intimacy with Daddy. It's a place of knowing and us being known. It's a place where we're fully known by the Spirit of God. And we're fully, how do you say, we're fully known by Him. And He has, if you will, we have no sense of secrets or anything that we're willing to have to hide in this place. We're open in this place with the Spirit of God. Can I tell you, this deep intimacy with the Spirit of God or the deep intimacy, our personal relationship with the Father is getting ready to take us to a whole nother place. It's going to build. Now, now, wait a minute. Christians, I hear you saying, we're supposed to already have this. Can I tell you what's happened? We have been prone to be in and out type of Christians. Our relationship with God has been like this. How do you say this? It's kind of like, man, a part-time Christian. It's kind of been like we've been seasonal. When we really needed him, that's when we came. We've been in this place, I say, like it's temporary. It's like it's only been temporal. Well, God wants you in a place that is not just temporal, it's not part-time, it's not seasonal, but he wants you in a place of dwelling in his presence. Amen. Well, so because we start to talk about that, there's some things that we need to understand. I want to take us and look at the scriptures, if you will. Let's look at some scriptures. Man, I, I, I tell you, when I start looking at the presence of God and I start to, how you say, go into it, I keep seeing more. But, but, but the reality of it is what I'm finding more and more is that it's like the more I dig, you know, the more I dig, it, it's like the sense of there's a desire for more of him. You ever, you ever say, God, I want more? You ever get a helping of something that was so good that you wanted more? Well, I want to tell you, God wants us to have an appetite for him, a craving, a desire to want all of him, to pursue him with everything we have. David was that man that pursued God. It was like when we say pursued God, he was that man that pursued after the right standing with God. He wanted to be in that place with God that whatever he did pleased him. Well, how do we please him? 
unless we understand his ways. Mm -hmm. How are we going to understand his ways? Unless we get in his word. How are we going to understand him? Unless we get into a place where he can talk and share and show us what it is he desires. Help me, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so there's this place where we need to seek after the presence. Well, well, let's see. One of the ways we can seek after his presence is through prayer. Through prayer is where we get into that place. It's like, you ever, you ever say, well, I want to know what it is that I need to do, how to go forth. Well, to find it, let, let, let's do this, because I'm, I'm going to be jumping and running there, and I'm excited, um, and I, I, I'll be jumping. Let, let's do this. I want us to go into the book of Psalms, and let's look at this verse, 46 and 10. And, and, and you know, we, 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 as we go here, I want to share some things with you, because the psalmist kind of leads you back and forth. He, he makes you look at something. And, and then if you're, if you're attentive, you'll understand exactly what he's saying, okay? Because we want, we want, how do I say, I want this intimacy with God. I want to be into this place where the Spirit of God is. I want to be able to share my innermost thoughts, but yet more importantly, like God says, when we come, the Father says, when we come to him, he says he wants to tell us things that we don't even understand about. Can I, can I tell you like this? He wants to bring us into a place we've never been. So if we go in the book of Psalms, amen, let's go to Psalms 46. Mm -hmm. Psalms 46, and let's, well, I say, wanted to say verse 10, but let's do this. Let, let's go from verse 1 to verse 10. I'm going to try to read quickly. Look at this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, these, every one of these words, God is our refuge and strength, and a very present help in trouble. And we're going to see how they come into being because in the presence of God, each one of these things will have their place. In the presence, if we're in the presence of God, we're, it is that place we're going to find about refuge, we'll find our strength, and it, it, as a very present, it, it, it's going to be where he is always going to be where we're at, even in the midst of our trouble. Therefore, will not, not we, we fear Though the earth be moved, removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, salah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the two groups were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is, Jacob is our refuge, Salah. Come before the works of the Lord, what desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth, he breaketh the bow, and cutteth the spear asunder, he burneth the chariot in fire. Now, verse 10, he says, be still. And know that I am God. Now, when he said, be still, can I tell you this? When God said, be still and know that I'm God, to be still, he was taking you back. Because what happens is, what, what's happening, there's so many things that's happened. So much chaos, so much destruction, so many things that are transpiring. That's what he's talking about. And when these things happen, the people start to do different things. Can I say, we have been accustomed to working things out on our own. Every time there's a problem or something arise, we've been accustomed to fretting, to be afraid, to be over, we call it over anxious or overly concerned, excuse me, because we don't like to say that we're anxious. But, but we become over anxiously, concerned, overwhelmed. We become, in many cases, irrational in our behavior when things don't settle in a way where we feel like we're in control. Can I say it like that? Amen. And so what transpires, what he's saying is like they see all these things that were happening, the waters roaring, the, it, 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 you know, the mountains shaking. It was like earthquakes and things. That, things are happening right. in the earth realm, and because it's happening, the people begin to do different things. Can I say this to us? When there's something happening in the earth realm and you're not in the presence of God, 
You're moved because of the chaotic nature of the situation. Amen. You're moved because you're not in control. Mm -hmm. You're moved and you're accustomed to trying to do something yeah. to make everything make sense. Right. So when he says be still, mm -hmm. it was be still from your way of doing things. Oh my God. Well, well, how do we be still? How do we be still if we don't know how to get in his presence? If we're not in the presence, how do we be still? Listen, watch this, watch this. Glory to God. So what happens, remember, in the midst of everything that's happening, he is your refuge. Mm -hmm. That means he's your place of asylum. He's your place where you go. He is your sanctuary. He's the place where you go when everything else is out of control. Glory to God. He was speaking to him. He wanted them to understand. Say, in my presence, I don't care what's happening around me. I don't care how things are moving. In my presence, whew, I give you the refuge. Man, can you imagine the chaos surrounding you, and yet in the midst of the chaos, God gives you peace. He says, I'm your strength. That, that's kind of like when he says he's your strength, he's your strong tower. What is that, a strong tower? It's like a fortress. It's a fortified city. It's a fortified wall. It's a place, a barrier that keeps everything from getting in. Can I tell you, in the presence of God, it is that place where you go, he's your refuge. But then he becomes your strength. He fortifies you. When everything around you seems like it's breaking up, when everything seems like it, it has you, you ever been in a place where you're so worried, so consumed, don't know what to do, and you're afraid. God brings his strength because he brings a sense of security. Thank you, Lord. He brings you to a place in this strength where you're good and ready to have what I call peace. Now, not the peace that the world offers, but he promises a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. But watch this. He says a very present help. Thank you, Lord. A very present help. What he's saying, God is omnipresent. So he's there in the midst of your troubles, in the midst of your distresses. He is right in the midst. Amen. He's there to move on your behalf. He's there to open doors. He's there to show a way. He's there to make a way out of no way. Amen. A very present help and trouble. Now listen, folks, what we've been missing is that we've been lacking the presence of God. In the presence of God, when everything is chaotic around us, God centers us in peace. Wow. Can I tell you this? Listen to this. One of the things that we have been missing and lacking is that we have been self-centered. Now, now, what do you mean by self-centered? Well, what happens when we become self-centered, that's the place where there's different things that enter in. And when they enter in, they create in us mm -hmm. a sense of dislodging, mm -hmm. A sense of discomfort. You know, we talk about depression. We talk about these different things that come in to oppress us. It's the Spirit of God that wants to bring us to a whole other dimension, yeah. but it comes in and through Him. Yeah, it's man. in His presence. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can I tell you this? Can I say it in this fashion? What's happening is that the presence, and I haven't even talked about trying to get into the presence. How do we get there? That's just, can I say, that's like a benefit of being, tell somebody that's a benefit to, to, to talk about the fortress, talk about the strength, talk about the sense of the refuge. That's benefits of being in the presence. That's what happens if you get in his presence. That's what's happening if you're in the, if you're dwelling in him, these are things that you're going to get. Woo! Amen. The psalmist recognizes some things. So when God says, when we hear the word, be still, and know that I'm God. Well, what is he telling you? He says, be still. Stop trying to do it your way. But then secondly, the first one will be, be still. Stop trying. Listen, be still. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to do it your way. Stop doing what you've been doing to make it happen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's hard for us. Man, because we just believe that we got to be doing something. You can't go, you can't move until strategically he gives you the insight about what you're dealing with. Amen. So you've got, you got to be still. Be still. And then he says, and know that I'm God. Well, wait a minute. 
really what he's telling you, and know that I'm God, he's telling us now, because no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, I am God, I am Lord, I am master, I am ruler over whatever's going on. I am on the throne. I reign over everything that's transpiring. Can I look at it like this? You say, God's in control, even when it looks like things are out of control. It looks like i got to fix it. God says, I don't need you to fix it. I need you to recognize who I am. Amen. Listen, what was the last time you paused, Salah? What was the last time you paused and really looked to see who was God? <coughs> well, well, when I say it like that, because if you're self-centered, you may not realize it, but you've made yourself Lord and ruler and master, and you have to fix and control everything. You have to make it work. You have to make things fit. You have to kind of make everything get together. Right. Glory to God. And I don't know about you, but I've tried it that way and it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Woo! Listen, it's in this place that now the Spirit of God wants you to recognize who He is. Remember, even in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father, mm -hmm. who art in heaven, mm -hmm. hallowed be. He makes it, He's sacred. His name is above all other names. Amen. Really, we got to come to this place to recognize who He is. Be still. And know that he's God. He says, be still. And know I am God. Wait a minute. The God that's over your troubles. Whatever your troubles are. Whatever your situation is that you're experiencing. Whatever it is that, you know, I could name a whole host of things that basically all of us have been experiencing. In some cases, it's the same thing. But he's still God in the midst. Yes, Amen. He wow. Yes, he is. Can I tell you, every time we lose sight of who he is, then we get into self-centeredness. And as long as I'm in that place, I'm missing who he is. Mm -hmm. And if I miss him, I miss my help. Absolutely. Whew. He said, be still and know that I am God. He says, I will be exalted among the heathen. Listen. I don't care what's raging. I don't care what's rising. God's going to be exalted above these things. Listen, there are things that are happening in the earth realm right now that I'm telling you that will cause a lot of people to be concerned. You need to get in the presence of God. You need to get in your dwelling place. You need to find this place where you're going to meet the Father and you and him are going to settle in and not leave out. Mm -hmm. But what, how do you do that? It's like walking in this place at all times. I'm talking about this intimacy with the Father where he's going to lead you in every place and in every situation. This is what you're looking for. Now, look, listen, this is why I say it. We prepared for a battle, but we're not ready for war. We're in this place. It's like we're ready to go forth to do something, but we don't have everything we need. It's not that God is not a prepared us. It's simply that we have not aligned ourselves with him. Help me, Holy Ghost. He said, be still and know I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. God says I'm going to be exalted. That means I'm going to be lifted up. Can I tell you, he's already lifted up in heaven. Oh, yes, Woo! Glory to God. You know, it, it, it's, it, when we start to see some of the things in the word, you know, it's, I believe it's in Isaiah where they were talking about how the angels were going around and his train filled the temple as they oh, went yes. around. All they could say was holy, holy, holy. All they, they yeah. just saw him. They were exalting the most high God. Yeah. Folks, I want to tell you, no matter what's going on, God will be exalted Thank above it all. Lord. Yes, he will. Thank you, Lord. we got to get into the presence. Oh, yes. Verse 11 says, the Lord of hosts is with us. Mm -hmm. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Yes. What all he's reminding them is who he is. Yes. Folks, can I tell you? God wants you to be reminded of who he is. It, 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 look, it's time out for playing church. Yes. And listen, the yes, way sir, things have been yes, going, sir. we haven't been able to come together anyway. Mm -hmm. But in Christ, we're always together. Amen. Listen, folks, it, it, it hasn't been that we can't, you know, we're still coming together. You understand? There's still some fellowship, but it's not the sense that we've been before. 
God still wants to do something different in our lives Amen. like never before. Amen. Can I tell you, God wants to be exalted in the heart of your life. Yes. God wants to be exalted in every aspect of your life. God wants to be exalted in your home. God wants to be exalted in your job. God wants to be exalted in every area. Amen. And thank Amen. you, Lord. Yes. Glorify. Can I say it to us today? Listen. The benefit, one of the benefits, I was telling you already, one of the benefits of being in the presence, <coughs> there, there's like, you're going to be in that place. You're going to see it. Go back. Go back to verse 1. Look at this. These are some of the benefits. If I'm in his presence, I have, I'm going to have the refuge. I'm going to have this place where I'm going to have a silo. Well, what is a silo? That's the place where I'm covered from all the stuff. That's the place where I can go. The refuge, the place. You know, it's the safety I can go to. Can you imagine... If I can just get to this place, I'm safe. God says, yeah. it's in me. I give you this safety. Mm -hmm. I give you this security. I, if you'll just get in the dwelling place with me, no matter what's happening around me, I've got you. Thank you. Then he says, he calls it, he, he says, not only is it this asylum, it's a strength. It's this place where God becomes our fortress. Man, can I tell you, not just a fortress, but an impenetrable force. Amen. It's not a place where anybody, nobody can break the barriers. Nobody can get through. There's no way for them to find a way in. God will keep you, cover you, and protect you. Can I tell you that you're God's property? Glory to God. You belong to him. He's got you covered. Amen. Amen. He's your strength. Amen. Amen. Yes, and then finally, his presence, he's there. He's there. Wherever you're at, he's yes. going to be there. Yes. Glory to God. This is just some of the things. Listen, this is, I hope this is making sense to you. And so I'm trying to slow down and not speed up because it's like I want to, I've got so many things I want to share. But we're talking about the presence. Mm -hmm. Man, and I love it because, again, going back to Moses, Moses simply said, listen, God, I want your presence and I won't settle for anything less. Mm -hmm. I want your presence more than anything. Glory to God. You know, it, it, it's these places that we're looking at. It's these things that we're talking about. It's the presence of God mm -hmm. that we have, we've been saying we want, but it's like, are we really seeking after him? Mm -hmm. You know, um, we were talking about this in Bible study because we, we came through this one. It's like Psalm 42, one, verses 1 and 2. Go there real quickly because I want you to see this. And I'm trying to hurry, folks. It's this thing. It's like, I want him. Do you really want God more than anything else? You know, you gotta want him more than you want the money. You gotta want him more than you want the relationship. You gotta want him more than you want the car. You gotta want him more than you want the children. You gotta want God above anything else. Amen. Woo! And so we talk about this. We we make songs about it. And so it says, as the deer panted for the water, mm -hmm. or after the stream, the brook, so my soul longs, or my soul after the thee, O God. It's like, listen, this deer was in this place. What he wanted was just a drink of water. Can you imagine what it's like collectively when we've been in a place that the only thing that's going to quench our thirst is that long, cold, cool glass of water? Listen, can I tell you, this deer was in a place that, that there was only one thing that was going to suffice. There was only one thing that was going to give him what he needed. He needed a drink, and he was seeking or seeking after it. Like any, nothing else. There was nothing else that mattered. The only thing that mattered was this, that he got this or he dried up. Can I tell you, many of us have been in a place, have not realized that what we needed was the spirit or the presence of God. And many of us have been drying up. We don't even realize it. Uh -oh. We've been drying up wow. because we haven't sought after the spirit of God. We've called after so many things, but we left the Spirit of God, the presence of God. We've left after that to seek after things. Can I tell you the things you've been seeking? If it's not Him, they're just temporal. They only give you satisfaction just for a moment. But in the presence of God, help me, Holy Ghost. Listen, there's the fullness of joy in the presence of God. If we can just come to this place that we seek after, nothing else matters but getting to the presence of God. Amen. Whew, nothing else is going to whet your appetite. Nothing else is going to change you. Nothing else is going to quench 
the thirst and desire within within you. Thank There's you nothing else that's going to appease. Listen to me. There may be times, there may be been a time in your life where something that you really want. Man, I just gotta have it. I just gotta have it. I just gotta have it. Could have been a new pair of shoes, you know, glory to God, a new outfit. Could have been something, whatever it was. But once you got it, once you had it in your possession, suddenly it was as like, hey, I didn't really want like want it like I thought. I want to tell you that the Spirit of God, if you will just begin to, to seek after the Spirit of God the way you sought after so many other things, if you'll just seek after Him like nothing else matters, that's really what, what's, what's got to happen for us. We've got to seek after it until we find it, until we obtain it. Now listen, the thing about the presence of God, you don't want to come in and then go out. You don't want to get there and walk away. It's this place that I want to be with the Spirit of God. And that's like Moses. That's like, that's like David. David was saying the same thing. He says, listen, it's not enough for me. He says, I've been in that place. David said, he said, listen, he said, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. And then he says, don't, don't cast me away from your presence. David was saying, listen, I want to be in your presence, Father. There's nothing else in that. He, as I said this before, he had seen what happened to Saul. He saw that when the presence of God had left Saul because of sin, when Saul, when the presence of God left sin, left Saul, there was so much that came. He was in so much anguish. He was in so much disparity. He was in so much hurt. He was in so much pain because there was no presence. There was no peace. Right. Can I tell you? In the presence of God, there is peace. Mm -hmm. In the presence of God, there is joy. In the presence of God, you're secure. In the presence of God, he is your strong tower for everything that's going on. In the presence of God, he'll keep you. So what's happening to us? If this is so great, if this is so good, saints of God, this is where he wants us. We have been seeking after programs. We've been seeking after prestige. We've been seeking after you know prosperity. We've been seeking after all these things more than we sought after the presence. Amen. It's like these are the promises that we wanted. But God says, if, you can I say it like this? Like Moses said, even if I obtain the promise, but if there's no presence, I don't want it. I don't want to go into a land flowing with milk and honey if your presence is not there. I don't want to go into a place where I'm supposed to flourish and blossom if your presence is not there. Can I say it to us? If we obtain the world, you know, it's like this. What, what, is going to, what is it going to gain a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? What is it going to gain us to get all these promises but not have the presence of God? Mm -hmm. Whew, folks, I'm telling you, we've got to desire this. You've got to want it. You've got to want it like, like how do I say this, like nothing else before. You've got to want it and secure it, hold on to it, keep walking in it, don't move from it. It's a place that God is calling us to. Amen. Amen. Woo! I know there's things happening. I, I, God wants to bless you. True enough, he wants to bless you, but he's going to bless you when you walk in his presence. Mm -hmm. Amen. Listen. It's in his presence. It's his place in his presence. You'll humble yourself. In the presence of God, you're going to surrender. It's like this is the place that God's looking for. It's total surrender. When you totally surrender, it's like, hey, remember when I told you about self-centeredness? When I get out of the place, about it's all about me. But in the presence of God, it's all about Him. As you draw close to the Lord, as you draw nigh unto the Lord, He'll draw nigh, nigh unto you. As you're drawing close to God, He draws close to you. God wants to be in your presence, even as you desire to be in His. But He wants you to come in this place that He becomes a dwelling place. It becomes a place of meeting between you and Him. Amen. This is the place where the Father wants to reveal secrets. That's right. In his presence, God wants to reveal his secrets. God wants to share things with you. Look at this. Look at this. Man, I just guess I'm making stuff up. Somebody go to Jeremiah chapter 33 and, and verse 3. Glory to God. Man, maybe I just get somebody to read for me. Can you read for me now? Somebody just read for me. Because this is the place where God is calling you to. He wants to give in his presence. He wants to offer up to you. Tell somebody, I want to know secrets. Amen. I want to know where to go. I want to know how to go. I want to know how to do it. God wants to give you those things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so he says, he says to us, come, come unto me. You know, come in this place. Yes. You know, 
Come unto me, and you even call up. Let me read it. Yeah, read it out. Read it out. Says, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and Listen, show thee great. He said, What? Call unto call me. Call unto me, and I will answer and thee. I, Listen, in his presence, when you come into the presence, when you call unto him, he will answer. And what happens, Pastor Wayne? And show thee great and mighty things. So God says, In your in his presence, I'm going to show can, can I tell you this? God's going to show you what's taking place and how to deal with the things we're dealing with. He's going to show you how to walk. He says, come and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not. Mm -hmm. But how do you get it? i got to come, come to, to this place where he's at. He says, that when you come, when you call to me. When you talk about calling, we could call it prayer. It's this place where we're praying. But if you're going to pray, you've got to get into a place of the spirit. Am I right Amen. 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 It's like I'm going to have to put put all some things to get into this place. In order for me to get into a place of prayer, to really seek the face of God, I'm going to have to surrender my will. Wow. Can I tell you? Some of us have to understand it's time to let your will go Amen. and allow the will of God to be done. Amen. Thank you, Woo. Lord. Amen. I hear you telling me, no, 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 I'm doing what is that what you want? Surrender. Mm -hmm. Surrender doesn't look like the thing that we like to call it. <clears throat> Amen. There's a difference between surrender and negotiation. Mm -hmm. And I like to say it like this because I found in most cases we try to try to negotiate, not surrender. Surrender is that place where, where you gotta just come out, you gotta just give in. Listen, the, the, the object is to put your weapons down, put down everything. When you surrender, you yeah. submit. You yield to who's ever in authority or whatever is in authority. You must yield to that place. Amen. Well, what we like to do is like, hey, God, if you do this, then I'll do that. That's not surrender, folks. Right. You're just negotiating the terms mm -hmm. in which you're going to work the pact, that's the right. covenant, the promise. But that's not how God operates. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> Can I tell you like this that you might understand? The promises of God are dependent on us doing what the Spirit of God says or what the pact or covenant says. Now, in this case, you must surrender. You must put yourself in that place. Glory to God. Tell somebody, I'm willing to come. Father, I want to be used. Father, I lay it all down. We keep saying we lay stuff down, but as soon as we lay it down, we keep picking it up. Woo! This you're going to have to give to God. He says, come. Can I say, I keep saying come, but it's like, call unto me. Well, the call, it's not just crying out because you're hurting. It's not just crying out because you want something. It's not just crying out because things are not going the way you want. It's not crying because you, you don't have control. It is literally coming to this place that I'm going to get myself in a position to talk to the Father. Amen. And when he says, when I call unto him, he says he's going to answer. Amen. And then he's Amen. going to show me great and mighty things that I don't know. Folks, there's some God things that God wants to deliver to you, but they're only going to come when you come into the presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So again, there's a benefit. Tell somebody another benefit to being in the presence. When I surrender my will, when I surrender my way, when I yield as unto the Lord, when I come to that place, there is a benefit whereby he's going to speak to me. Woo! Help me, Holy Ghost. Man, isn't that good stuff? Isn't that great to yeah. know that yeah. in the presence of God, oh, there's yeah. great things that God has in store. But i got to get there. But listen, can you imagine coming into the presence of God mm -hmm. to leave out, getting information, and then walking away with the information? <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, God wants us in a place, can I say this, where we're walking in an intimate setting with him all the time. Amen. Can you imagine what it was like for Adam and Eve when the Bible said talks about how in the cool of the day, how the Father came or the presence of God came. Listen, it was his Shekinah glory that covered them at all times. Can I tell you, God wants to be with you at all. You want to be in the presence of God at all times. Listen, there's something different when we can have. We can have a calmness, a peace. We can have a place that we have been lacking simply by surrendering our will. Look at this. Let, let, let's kind of that same kind of thought. Let's just do this. Man, I've been jumping. Is this making sense to anybody? Amen. Glory to God. Look at, look at this. Go over to John. 
chapter 15 and verse 5. Glory to God. John chapter 15 and verse 5. Man, I got a bunch of scriptures. I tell you, I'm going to give you about one more, and then I'm going to call it a day, and we'll come back and reconvene as they say the next time. Glory to God. Amen. Is it blessing you? Because God wants you in his presence. God wants you to see something that you haven't seen. Can I tell you, if you want to talk about it, somebody asked me, hey, did you make a New Year's resolution? No, I didn't. But you know what? There are, can I can say this to us? Maybe there is a time where we need to look at and renew our covenant. Maybe we need to look at the path or promise that we made to God. Maybe we need to reconsider the goals that we've set. How do you say? Redefine your goals. Amen. Sometimes you need to look again at what's going on in your life. Yes. Glory to God. If I can say it in that fashion, maybe it's time for us to look and say, wait a minute. You know, I can't go back. You know, here's the thing about it. You can't go back because we always talk about, man, what it used to be in Christ, how I used to be. You know, God don't want you to go back. He just wants you to do something. Where are you at? Oh, let's forget about the past, but let's do something about the present. Amen. What does that entail? What does that entail? Look at this. Look at this. Watch this. Because I'm telling you, if you're in the presence, there, there's some things you're subjected to. That there are positive things. There are great things that you're subjected to when you're in the presence of God. John. Oh, I'm in Luke. Man, Lord of God. John chapter 5, 15, verse 5. Amen. You, you with me, amen? Amen. amen? amen. John chapter 15, verse 5. Because he's getting ready to show you this, that he's who he is and who you are. And then what, how would you say this? Uh, there's some things, some benefits. Tell somebody benefits. Man, I love it. Don't you love it every time God says there's a benefit? <laughs> Woo! You know, every time you look at the word of God, there's a benefit. We like it. He says, I, talking about Jesus, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me. Listen, he says, he that abideth in me, he that dwells or lives or abodes or lives in me. Well, wait a minute. When he says live, he's not talking about every now and then. Live. This is the place of continual. How you say? This is the place where you're steadfast in. This is the place you don't come in, go out. This is where I remain. That's right. Amen. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him. So not only is the presence of God in us, but we're in him. Woo. He says, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Listen, there's something you want to know benefit? The benefit in Christ, you're getting ready to bear fruit. Amen. You're getting ready to, how you say it? You're getting ready to break forth. People are going to see some real things taking place through your life because you're in the presence of God. Amen. He's getting ready to show you how to be, how you say it, how to bear fruit. How to, how to, how you say, reproduce. God's going to show you how to do things according to the Spirit. He's going to show you how to walk in this place. That's what he was telling you over in Jeremiah. He says, I'm going to show you great and mighty things you know not. He's not only going to show you what's taking place in this realm, he's going to show you even in the spirit realm how to go forth in this place. Amen. He says this. He says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. But then he says, for without, for without me, you can do nothing. Listen, if you're not abiding in the presence, you've been trying to do it on your own. If without the spirit of God, you, the constraints that you have are simply what you're doing. You're the one that's making it happen. And what can I tell you about that? It may look like a good work, but it's not a God work. There may be some good things you're doing, but God wants to see something great and marvelous in this hour. Amen. But the way it's going to transpire is that you and I will submit, surrender our will, our way, our mindset, our thinking, how we believe it should be done, and come into a place that by the Spirit, we seek Him like never before. Amen. Folks, I, I need you to hear it. I need you to understand it's not just something that we should be talking about. It's something we should be doing. I can't tell you that you're going to have to fast for the next 40 days and get into his presence. I can't tell you how you're going to have to tear. I can't tell you what it is that he wants. God knows specifically what he wants from you and Amen. how he wants you in his presence. Amen. It's your relationship with him. And he wants you walking continually with him. Amen. Well, to bear this fruit, to bear this fruit. This is where we get ready to see 
those, those things of God come forth. You ever look at the fruit of the Spirit and recognize sometimes we're not walking with joy. We're not walking with temperance. We're not walking with certain things that the Spirit of God speaks of because we have not been in his presence continually. Mm. When we're walking in the presence of God, we begin to, whether we like it or not, he begins to take out stuff, and after a while, what's coming forth is the Spirit of God. What comes out of you, you will be, be how you say, it, begin to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Woo! Because you've been in His presence. Mm -hmm. Benefits, folks. Thank you, but Lord. you can't do this aside from Him. You can't do it apart from Him. You can't make anything happen in and of yourself. Amen. And folks, I want to tell you, you may want to do some things, and you may look good while you're doing it. But if the Spirit of God is not in it, mm -hmm. it still come up. Amen. Whew. Amen. I see a lot of us doing a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. I see a, a lot of us, and I hear us say some great things, but I can tell that the Spirit of God is not in it. Amen. Listen, the character, the true character of the man is going to come out. At some point or another, you're going to see the character of the man that comes out. Mm -hmm. You know, can I tell you that like this? You can have great morals, but the character that's in you is going to come out Amen. because of the spirit that's oh, within. Yes. Woo. Jesus. Man, sooner or later, mm -hmm. if the spirit of God is not in you, Jesus. everybody's going to know it. Amen. Jesus. Can I say that to the body of Christ? Jesus. Look again, folks. Go back. Stop looking at your neighbor, but look to yourself. Amen. What's inside of you? Yes. What's inside of you? Jesus. The way you're talking, the way you're behaving. Do we have hate and anger inside of us? Or do we have love and peace and joy, which is, comes from the Holy Ghost, which comes from being in the presence of God? Jesus. Glory to God. Something's got to happen. Something's got to give. Something's got to change. Folks may be doing all kinds of things, but you're not supposed to do what they do. You're supposed to react or respond according to the Spirit. Amen. Because you're in the presence of God. Amen. Whew, I guess I'm going to get in trouble after a while. It's okay. But listen. Am I making sense to anybody? Amen. I'm telling you, Amen. the Spirit of God wants you. God wants to captivate your attention. It's been so many things that have caught our attention in the past. Yes. It may have been the sense of somebody, you ever seen somebody walk by you, and even when they walk by, because of the, the, the particular perfume or cologne that they had, the aroma of that individual was still there long after they gone. Yep. I want you to know the presence of God wants to create a residue in your life yes. that wherever you go, somebody's going to know that the Spirit of God was present because of you. Right. Amen. It's this place. Mm -hmm. There's an aroma yes. that each of us should have that comes forth from the Spirit of the living God. Amen. We've been lacking Oh, our fragrance, even our fragrance has not been what it should because we have not been in the presence very long. Amen. Thank you. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Now, listen, I told you I got so much here. I want I want to just, just, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right now. We'll come back to it. Listen, this is like part three. Glory to God. We'll go to part four. Amen. I'm telling you. Thank you, Lord. Will you just listen to me? I'm telling you we have been in this place. We, we're prepared for a battle, but we're not ready for war. Listen, how can we realistically go out without the Spirit? How can we go out and deal with the world if the Spirit of God is not with us? Amen. I want to bear witness to somebody today. We need to come back and do some praying. Oh, yes. I ain't talking about the, the kind of praying that you've been accustomed to. Listen, I'm talking about praying mm -hmm. that the Father might be within you and you within the Father. Jesus. Father, help me to spend some time with you. Yes. Help me to get begin to renew this place yes. where the time, my time, you know, can I say it like this? We've been out of balance. Yes. We spent more time doing some other things, but the thing that you love, the thing that you really desire, that's what you're going to find yourself doing more of. Yes. We got to get back to loving on the Father. Woo, we got to get back to, to be in the presence yes. of the Most High that he might be in our presence, that no matter where we walk, no matter where we go, we're consumed by the presence of the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Listen, he's a living God. Yes, he is. Woo! Man, it's kind of like when you talk about God, and I, like even with the deer that's panting after the water, folks, I'm telling you, it's like life to us. Mm -hmm. If I don't get it, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. We need to be in the presence of God. 
like never before. Mm -hmm. Folks, if you don't get it, if you don't get into the presence, surely we will die Absolutely. along the way. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's time, like never before. We're in a season that each of us need to be in his presence, not just for a moment, but at every step we take, you, every move we're going to make, we must move and be consumed mm -hmm. by the presence of our Lord. That's right. Again, folks, I'm telling you, I, I don't want this word to fall on deaf ears. I, I, I know I didn't break down points one, two, three, and four for you, but I've got some points in there. Just listen real close. The Spirit of God wants to take you to a new dimension, a new realm in Him. Are you willing to submit yourself that the Father might work and walk in you? Walk out the things that He needs to do in the earth realm. Listen, let's pray. If this word is making sense to you, Father, and I'm praying because he already said that his word will not return to him void. So I know what the word says, and I'm standing on the word. Tell your brother, say your sister, say your friend, I'm standing on the word. I'm standing that the spirit of God is going to consume me. I'm going to seek after him like I've never sought after anything before. I'm going to seek after the presence of God like nothing else. There's nothing else that's going to matter more than the presence of God. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for this time of sharing your word. And Father, as you've already stated, you said that your word will not re return to you void. But I thank you that the word's going to impact. The word's going to move. The word's going to cause change. The word's going to promote. The word's going to cause conviction. And the word is going to cause us to come into your presence. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you're speaking to us even now. I thank you, Lord, that even today, that this word penetrates us in such a place or convicts us to such a degree yes, that we come seeking you like never before. Yes, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that we forget about yesterday, mm -hmm. last month, last week, but right now we recognize that what we need more of is we need more of you. Yes, Lord. Father, give us the time Jesus. that we say we don't have. Redeem mm -hmm. that time to us that we use our time widely for thank your glory. You, so I thank you, Father. I thank you again mm -hmm. that you're preparing us, Father, to walk in a new way. So we give you the glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you now for everyone in the listening audience that they are blessed in Jesus' name. Now that you might hear that the word works if you will work the word. The word works if you will work the word. Be blessed. We now have three ways that you can give. You can go to our website at agapecommunityfellowship.com. Go to the bottom and click on the Givelify link. That's one way. Way number two is to give through Zelle. To give through Zelle, just go to your bank account, click on the Zelle uh, icon. The email address for that is agapeint for us at yahoo.com. The third way to pay is go to the P.O. Box 1222, Pomona, California, 91767. Thank you.